Yeah, what age do you stop wiping their ass? <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Well, it's you not. Know, it's weird doing a podcast in the evening, don't you think? I know. I was thinking that. I almost feel like once I've had the baby, if we do podcasts in the evening, we should do it with like a glass of wine. Mm, it's winter. It's almost like we need a glass of bread. Yeah. If we do like any more moving forward in the evening. It is really nice. My eyes are stinging. I feel so tired today. No, look at me. I'm. I oh, exactly haven't got any same. makeup on. So, right. tiny bit of eyeliner. But um, can we start off the podcast by talking about how amazing you looked at the Pride of Britain Awards? Oh, thank you. I scrubbed up <gasps> all right. <laughs> oh my! And also, Looking do you feel like? <laughs> no, but come on, that's it's not reality. To look like that all the time, <laughs> every day. Do you feel like that was almost like your first? Was it your first red carpet since Edward? Edward. Yes, it, it was. Yeah. And it was almost like, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back with feathers, with slick hair. Oh, um, my God. I, do you know what? Amazing. I said to mum, because mum was with, with us. We got ready at the hotel because mum obviously came up to look after Edward. <laughs> Poor Rosie, what happened with Gaynor. Um, and when I was getting my makeup done, I didn't see it until right at the end. And we kind of had a brief. I knew I wanted kind of slick hair. And I knew that the makeup, I wanted to go kind of quite feline-y, a little bit different. But for me, it was quite a lot and quite, for me, it felt quite dramatic. Although it wasn't, mum was like, I think it's just you. Like, cause I, I mean, I loved it, it looked lovely, but it, I was like, oh, do I look really different? Because you know when it's a But that's really nice. I feel like when you do a red carpet look... Like and especially that I felt like that was a real look, like the slick bun, the makeup, the feathers, and I think it's nice to look different because I think it has more of an impact, doesn't it? Yeah, and I feel like if you're gonna do it and look kind of different and go sort of you know push the boundaries a little bit, you do it on a red carpet, don't you? Like when you're trying out new go looks big or go hairdos. home. Yeah, so I was actually I do you know what I I did I did like it, and I think that. I was just being a little bit, um, I guess, self-conscious or a little bit anxious because it's not what I'm used to, I think, like that hair and makeup. But anyway. Oh, I, I loved it. I, I really loved yeah. it. And then um, uh, when I look back at the pictures the next day, I was like, oh, you'd actually look really nice. So yeah, I was pleased. It was good. It was a great night. And even all the, um, yeah, like all the red carpet pictures and like ev- like you, you looked flawless. You know, sometimes when you do a red carpet, the the pat pictures you think oh no like yeah always wasn't like the best lighting or the best angle but all the photos looked amazing oh thank you well my night actually got cut short didn't it i actually deep down kind of knew it was going to happen so we were on a bit of a roll a little while back and edward was pretty um good with taking my milk from the bottle and i hadn't done it in ages and i guess partly it's my fault cuz he's just so used to having booby I expressed milk, had it all ready for mum. Um, mum took him out for a walk. They had a nice bath. Um, so time kind of passed, and then I got a message from mum. I'd sort of done the carpet, sat down, watched a couple of the um, like the heroes, and then uh, mum messaged me saying uh, he's had he's had a little bit of a paddy or something like that. She said, yeah. and I looked at Paul and I was like, mum would never even text. No. When we're out, like, she just wants us to have a good time and, you know, forget about it, enjoy yourself, don't worry, I think it'll be fine. Um, so when she texts that, I replied and I was like, well, you know, just let me know what kind of, like, at, like you know, what, how is he? I can leave. To so what extreme? To so what extreme, <laughs> yeah. I was like, because I can literally leave here and be, be back to the hotel in 10 minutes because I was only around the corner. And she went, well, I think he's okay for a minute. Um, I'll, I'll let you know. So what I did was, we'd had dinner and stuff. I, I waited for the next kind of um, hero um, announcement. You know, they go up on the stage, don't they? Yeah, and for the awards. Yeah, for the awards. I waited for that to pass. And then I just said to Paula, I'm going to go. Because I just knew mum would never text. And no. I got Yeah, and I got back. I got like straight through the door and he was obviously obviously was asleep in mum's arms um, and mum was like oh he's gone back to sleep I said mum it doesn't matter I was like look it was it was nice enough being out for them a few hours and it, it honestly didn't bother me at all and if anything I'm just grateful to have woken up no hangover true you know, it, it was a shame not to finish off the evening in terms of like the award ceremony because it was amazing like it was so good I think it's on telly this week isn't it yeah um it was really good and we had 
a nice table, like there was some nice people in our table and stuff, but I was not up for drinks after anyway. So yeah. um mum was like, you know, I feel really bad. I was like, Mum, don't be silly. I was I said to her, like, it's you know, it's a breastfed baby, it's so Well tough. I have to admit, mum so mum actually called me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I knew she would have done. <laughs> she was like, I don't know what to do. She was like He's been crying now for, for quite a while. I don't know. I can't settle it. She was like, "Any tips?" And I was like, "Oh, mum." I was like, "I really." I said, "I don't. I don't know." And I, I knew mum didn't want to text you, but I think, yeah, like I, I said to her, all you can do is maybe try and take him out again. She said, I've "Been walking up and down the corridor." And that's the thing, because when you're in a hotel, mum was like, "Didn't obviously want to." You're limited. Everybody. Yeah, it was just so limited for like space. Yeah, but, and um, then it's so typical, isn't it? He was. Yeah, sleep when you got home, but it was fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm to be, like I said, I, I was actually grateful to kind of chip off early and then get yeah. in. Mum stayed for a bit. We actually ordered a glass of wine and we chatted for a bit, and then I got Mum an Uber home. And then me and Edward went to bed, and then I did sort of hear Paul come in around midnight. So it wasn't that late actually. Oh, he wasn't too late. Then. It wasn't too late, but it was nice. We got up in the morning, like had breakfast, went for a little walk out along the embankment and stuff like that but yeah it was lovely it was really nice I'm glad oh, I went but I just yeah. kind of had a feeling that might happen with Edward but never mind well I obviously didn't make it to the Pride of Britain Awards this year I just do you know what after last week with the move I mm. I just feel like I'd hit a brick wall and you know sometimes like that old saying you somehow you just have to listen to your body don't you mm-hmm. and I just yeah definitely have been so flat out full on to the extent where I actually made myself I, I was quite ill last week and mm-hmm. it took me well I was ill a couple of weeks ago but it took me a couple of weeks to recover and that's really unlike me and I just thought do you know what sometimes you just got to and also you, just can't, you can't and you can't do everything so you have to say no sometimes like you know yeah. and also you're so I pregnant. was gutted not to go because it is like you say such an amazing night but I just yeah. I literally and even now still I just feel it just feel exhausted like the move <laughs> don't ever move eight months pregnant anyone I think we might have said this before can we talk about your pantry yes that, I mean, I've, guys, I went to Billy's house um, a few days ago. We had a sleepover and it was at the weekend, wasn't it? Um, had a sleepover and Billy's pantry is literally perfection. It's amazing. Billy's pantry. <laughs> and it was really funny because I arrived at Billy's and she just left to go and pick up the kids. And Billy was really annoyed because Greg was supposed to pick up the kids and something happened. Anyway, um, I rang. She was like, don't go anywhere. I was like, I promise <laughs> I'm going to stand in the kitchen and not move because obviously Billy wanted to give me a grand tour um, when she got back. And the, th- the first thing that you showed me was the pantry, wasn't it? It's literally amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously I had a little bit of help doing that. Yeah. Like I didn't do it all myself. But I do think like once you've got all those organisation jars and everything mm-hmm. like yep. it's like I've had so many people message me about it obviously I did I tagged in everyone that um you know that helped bring it to yeah. life but I have always always dreamt of having a pantry so when we yeah. when we started to build on this house there was like a few like you write like a wish list don't you like mm-hmm. of what you want and and that room has been like I know it sounds cringe, but it is literally a dream, dream come true. But I bet that even since you've had... The, I bet that pantry's used more than any other room in it's, the house. Well, it's constantly used. And also, like, loads of people have said, oh, it won't stay like that for long. But actually, it's so much easier than a cupboard because, you know, if a cupboard, you sort of shove things at the back and you then of you can't course. find it. Yeah. Well, this, like, where everything's on display and everything's yeah. been organised so well by the ladies that organised it for me... Like, you could just see everything, and it's really easy. Like, the only thing which is lethal, like, Greg keeps going, the pantry's lethal, the pantry's lethal, because he's in there constantly, like, we've obviously got, like, a sweet drawer, of snack course, yeah. drawer. And, it's and like, even the But kids. it's because, I think it's because, as well, you've just filled it all up because it's new. Yes. It's like, it's, you know, it is like a candy shop. You go in there, and I opened up a couple of the drawers. There's, like, the crisps, the sweets, and there's, like, and all the cookies in the jar. And and tight, like, and yeah. fresh. But it's, yeah. But yeah, no, I I am so happy with it. And actually, the pantry is the first fully complete room of the house. 
<laughs> the pantry and your downstairs bathroom, which and is my equally downstairs, amazing. <laughs> yeah, and my downstairs toilet that we've named the posh loo. And um, also it smells amazing in there. It's so nice. Yeah, they're the, they're the only two rooms that complete. I've got a long way to go. What and about when the kids are around? I, I came out, I, I used the toilet downstairs, the posh loo. And then when I came out, there was like a piece of paper in there and a red pen. And I said to Billy look what was in the bathroom and then all the children denied it I was like you cannot <laughs> take red pen and draw in the posh loo do that in yeah. the toy room <laughs> do, I know that's the thing like they were so is, excited though but they was just everywhere they were wasn't they? they were so excited like it's, it is exciting for them and, and it's hard because as much as like I'm trying to keep everything tidy and neat and you know things like the kids keep running out in the garden in their socks right and then they run through the house and next thing you know they're up the stairs and then it's like you don't I don't want to feel like I'm being a nag because I want them to be excited but you know you know it's all these little things but but it's things that they'll get used to like my two now know that upstairs shoes off upstairs like no yeah you just 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 little rules that you just have to make and then they'll get used to it yeah they'll get used to it Mum moved in today to her I know. new house. I, I gave her a voice note because I thought I'm not going to ring her because I thought she's going to be so busy. But um, I'm actually going to call her in a little while. Have you spoke to her? Have you been down there? How was yeah. it? Yeah. So are we, I, I popped down there earlier on, earlier on with Arthur. Yeah. And um, we just took her some flowers and Arthur made us some little cakes this afternoon. Oh. Um, all the removal men, they were just sort of finishing off, putting all the boxes in the house and... It felt like all lovely and fresh and nice. You know when it's all been cleaned and no clutter? And she was like, mum seemed really happy and really excited. And um, So she's sleeping in there tonight, right? She's staying there tonight. And and, um, as I left, it was so weird. Me and mum was really laughing because it was role reversal. Like, So mum was at the door saying goodbye to me. And I was going, bye. I was like lovely and me and mum was like oh my god we was really laughing like it felt yeah, because so because it's just yeah it's what you see in mum off yeah exactly from that house but no mum seems you know she seems really happy and excited and um she oh, we, we was good. getting all like some bits out and obviously she's gonna change some decorating and everything yeah. so mm. But no, she she was ex- she seemed yeah happy and excited. It made me laugh. So um, for the listeners, Mum has been nagging me and Billy for years to go into her garage, oh, take what yes. we want from all the memorabilia over the years, and then she was going to basically chuck the rest because she's been holding it forever. So we finally the other day went around there, didn't we, into Mum's garage, and we found some real treasures. Oh, it was brilliant. We was found brilliant. in like. Um, like school books that we sort of wrote all our secrets and love notes in. Um, what was the other thing? Like, remember Groovy Chick? Like we Groovy found Chick Groovy is, Chick yeah. dolls. Loads um, of photos of ex-boyfriends that we didn't oh, take. Oh, no, we like, can't take them. We'll have to leave. You can, you can chuck them ones, Mum. Um, Cards. And, um, and remember, so when we was younger, like as a group of friends, when it was like one of our birthdays, we always used to make picture boards, didn't we, for each other? Always. All the and memories like, that like, across the year. Yeah, we found loads of picture boards, like, all like little cutouts of all, like, because really then there was no Instagram or there was no social media, was there? Like, no. all your pictures you would have to look at physically, wouldn't you? wouldn't physically. go on your phone and look at them, would you? Yeah, what's that? There was that website that I was... Pixo. I think I don't know, Pixo, and then you upload pictures onto it. That was almost that? like the start, wasn't it? That was kind yeah. of the start of, like, putting your self, self out there, I guess. Facebook. Like on the internet. Um, yeah. But yeah. And then Jot made me laugh. So um, I had a Pringle bag, you know, that, that phase everyone went through in senior school. So, you know, I took it home with me because I thought, oh, it's pink, like, or purple. I thought, well, Rosie might might want it who knows anyway so I got home and she was looking through all my pictures and all my bits that I'd save like a few random magazines and stuff and um I went oh mummy bought this bag back for you Rosie thought you'd quite like it do you do you want to keep it she looked at it she picked it up looked inside it and it was almost like she smelled it because it must have been like (laughs) like a bit musky musky and she went "Mm, no thanks and put oh. it down and then just wandered off back into the toy room. It's way <laughs> too vintage, way too vintage for her. She did not improve, yeah, of the uh, Pringle bag. But that, is that was really, that was so strange, wasn't it? Going through all that old stuff. Oh like, it's God. so nostalgic, like, memories. So nostalgic. And, there's, and, and it really does trigger so many, like, 
memories yeah like well, i've got on here because i've just i took pictures of some of the stuff like one of the things that made me laugh was remember i always used to make the cds i used to burn off the cds and always. put the tracks and i used to write down like all the tracks and the number of the songs and when you look at the songs it actually does make you feel oh, i remember these times like yeah. lose lose control missy elliott remember we had a full-on dance routine to that oh song oh my gosh it's hilarious it's just like, so it does, funny it takes you back doesn't it because you you forget like I mean, you obviously don't yeah. think about all the old times, but then when you do that, it's just, it does really take And it's almost like when you look back at your old stuff and you physically hold it, it's almost like you remember it like that. It's like you forget. And yeah. then I, I kept my Shenfield High School, like, um, diary books. Do you know, you put all your school stuff in it. And when I was actually looking at it, I was like, I can remember this now, like writing in it and everything, but only because I was physically holding it. Of course, yeah. It just... It's so weird. It was, that was so, I love that though. I'm. Do you know what I've... I'm the same. I've got a bag full of stuff, and Nelly did start to go through it. But I said to Nelly, "I oh, will sit down one night and look yeah. through it all because the kids they love it, don't they? Like all the yeah, all like your like stuff, and even like the drawings that we did at their age for them to see." This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. As you'd have probably heard by now, we use HelloFresh all the time, don't we, ma'am? Yes, we do. It's just so easy and convenient to have fresh ingredients delivered straight to your door. Obviously, life is really busy at the moment for both of us, and there isn't always time to go around the shops. Tell me about it, especially with the house move. It's been so handy being able to cook with HelloFresh. The meals are perfect for everyone too, and even the kids love them. Recently, I cooked the beef and bean tacos. Usually, mm. we have like chicken, fajitas, that kind of thing, but mm. beef and bean tacos, everyone absolutely loved it. You can even select family-friendly dishes on the HelloFresh website, so you know you'll be sent recipes which suit everyone. And we've got a treat for you. You can get 50% off your first box and 35% off your next three boxes with the code in capitals, Sam and Billy. That's the code Sam and Billy. Enjoy. Let's do pit and peak or peak and pit. What's your peak and pit of the week? Okay, so my pit of the week is, right, this sounds really boring, but so for our listeners that don't know, I've got an ongoing ear problems, okay? Oh. Ear, ongoing ear problems. And yeah. so the last... Um, couple of weeks they're really playing me up again and you know when you're pregnant you can only sleep on your side so I yeah. every night I'm up all night because the pressure of my ear on the pillow is horrendous like oh, no. so <laughs> not only sleepless nights because of the pregnancy now the ears are really playing me up but I've managed to book him with a specialist next week because it's it's so painful like I can't explain, it's just awful. Anyone with ear problems will completely sympathise with me, I think. Do you remember when we was on our way to New York and you just overcome something really bad with your ears and we yes. were flying, so you had to put that balloon in your the nose balloon. and then yeah. blow it up with your other nostril? Yeah, that's no... <laughs> People but this, must have thought... No, so it's all stemmed. It's all stemmed from that. So ever since that happened to me, like not on that trip, remember the trip yeah. before, mm -hmm. I suffer with my ears. It's like, it's like, like my eustachian tube. Anyway, so that's my, definitely my pit of the week. My peak of the week is definitely Nellie's back in the saddle. So some of you... That's amazing. Listeners will know, and obviously Samantha knows Nellie broke her arm. Um, about, God, about six weeks ago now. Anyway, she's finally back riding again. She's doing it on lead rein. So um, obviously, you know, I have to be really careful. Um, yeah. Because we don't want her falling off again. Um, oh, sorry. Shut the door, please, darling. Um, so yeah, she's back in the saddle. I'm so pleased for her because I was worried that she was going to be a little bit scared to start riding again, but she's yeah. actually been the opposite, really confident. And her riding instructor, Lois, said to me today that she's actually, she's since the fall, it's, it's made her more aware. She's now yeah. like asking more questions about, because usually she's, you know how clumsy she is. Yeah, and, she's um, just... Yeah, all oh, look, she's a bit more cautious. Really, yeah, really, but like in a good way, where she's yeah. more confident riding, but she wants to learn more about, you know, her positioning and all stuff like that. So yeah, hopefully she keeps it up, and we don't oh, have any. That's more really good news. Yes. Um. So my pick, peak, and pitch. My peak. Um. 
This is so random. Go on. <laughs> and I'm actually trying to think, and I can't really say, oh, I went to the Pride of Britain, because we've already discussed that. So um, a lady reached out to me on Instagram who is very much involved in like the local community and mm. asked me if I would turn on the Cobham Christmas lights. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. Are you going to do it? And And I agreed. I'm going to do it. <laughs> okay, sweetheart. Do you know what? Um, so more but, than anything, yeah. the kids are gonna love that. Well, this is it. So I discussed it with like my friends. Um, it's okay, darling. And I was like, you, you better, you all better be coming to this. I was yeah. like, because they've asked me, and say hi, auntie. Um, yeah. So it did make me giggle, and I was a bit like, oh, I don't know. And then I thought, Do you know what? I can actually just get the kids involved. Like, they can come up with me, do it. They can have rides there, stalls and that kind of thing. Oh, brilliant. And I guess, you know, it's showing a bit of, like, good spirit. You good know, living, spirit, local community and living, all that. Yeah, exactly. So that is, um, yes, yeah, so that's that. And then I think my pit could be... I'm just really laughing about, like, the big announcement that you're turning on the local Christmas lights. No, they've done something on social media. That would be Greg's dream in Brentwood, by the way. And it's with someone else. Really? You should get him to do it. (laughs) Um, It's with a guy called Mike Brown. I think he's rugby. So it's the two of us. Festive food stalls, children's fairground rides, live entertainment, and much more. Guys, come down to the Cobham Christmas extravaganza if you want to see me (laughs) turn on the Christmas lights. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that's in November. Um, My pit, 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 what could it be? I mean, this is a little bit boring, but um, I'm just not really progressing with Edward Sleep, if that helps. He just is like fidgets all night. He's tossing, mm. he's turning, he's trying to scratch where we still got his bit of eczema. Yeah. Um. He maybe it's time for more food. Absolutely. I know we spoke about this before, but okay. One second, Paul. Can you wipe Rosie? <laughs> wipe my bum. A, when do they wipe their own bums? Well, I would say to encourage it from. Well, from when they from when they start school, really, don't you? In case mm. they need but to go in school, it's hard, isn't it? Because sometimes you think, "Oh, is it easier and less right. for me to do it?" That's what I always yeah. think. I think if you even like, you know, but. even yeah, I even sometimes do ask. That's a question now. for our listeners that have kids. Yeah, what, what age is the right age? Do you <laughs> stop wiping their ass because my two definitely can, but you just yeah, you don't know if they're going to be left with like. Well, yeah, my. Uh, no. Skidaroos. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is really funny, actually. <laughs> you had a skidaroo today. No. <laughs> I, no, you know when, when you stayed the weekend? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Greg White's uh, Paul's bum, little Paul, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I obviously. heard him go, when we was upstairs, you was downstairs yeah. with him and go, uh, Greggy, Greggy, and it really, <laughs> and it really made me laugh because it was that day that Greg was hungover. Oh no, that is hilarious. Where was we? Probably at mum's. No, I was. I, no, I was pottering around. You was downstairs with the baby, That's but it the just it really thing. made me laugh. Greggy, he asked, he asked Greg. Greg must have thought, oh, I thought oh, I'm gonna let you. Yeah, I'm gonna let you do that one, Greg. That's that yeah, that's one being for you. Yeah, that was funny actually because the kids. Obviously, going back a bit oh, yeah. on the weekend, they stayed at Billy's with the kids, and Greg went out with his friend. Arthur and Paul was awake all night. Oh no, they it really took bad. their bees, didn't they? They did. every half an hour. There was Hank because I was sleeping on the side of the bed, which was closest to the door. And I'm not even joking. Every half an hour, they're both like standing over me in their pajamas, just staring. Like, oh, it was or bad. we can hear this, or uh, the telly's on downstairs, or. Um, can we put the telly on or we're thirsty I was like boys honestly it felt when when it was time to wake up and Edward woke up I felt like it was three in the morning still I was like I can't believe and all the that's time. the thing and in between that you was doing night feeds yeah exactly so I literally you must have left mine a zombie I, I was, to be fair I was a bit of a zombie as well that next day <laughs> yeah but you're pregnant but I I literally got home that night I made something really quick for dinner then I got into bed. And then the next day I had an early night as well. Yeah. I, I've just, it just, it's just tiring. And also like with Edward at the moment, I'm like, oh, he just, yeah, I'm going through a, either a, where he's growing Growth as well. Spare. Yeah. 
But um, like after so this, so what are you gonna do? So what what's your plan? Maybe feed, give him some more food. Yeah, so I'm maybe gonna like start because he's five porridge. and a half months now, so he can start eating more solids. Well, you know, like blended bits. Um, yeah, and then also I'm just gonna try and not give him boob in the night as much because he's just like on off on off, and it's mm, kind it's of like a, it's little, become like a comfort rather than he it. needs it. Then the feed, so I'm gonna try and avoid just whacking him on the boob, and then maybe try and like shush him or I don't know something else. Basically, isn't being a parent like? It's the most rewarding yet hard job in the world. It is, it's isn't so it? so hard. It's like every stage, every phase. I I keep thinking to myself as well, obviously, uh, like, very soon about to have baby mm-hmm. number three, and I keep thinking, oh, my gosh, like, I haven't even thought about, like, everything that comes how with a baby. And how dem- yeah, like, I keep... Like, I think of, like, my everyday life now, and obviously you know how busy it is, and obviously we've got a little break from filming for a couple mm. of weeks, but I'm thinking about when it goes back to that and just juggling everything and work and the other two and the school commitment. Like, it's a lot, isn't it's it? It's a lot. It really is. And I think that you kind of just, like, get through it. You get through each stage, and then you kind of look back and you'll probably laugh and be like, how did I do it? But you just yeah. do it. It's like you're on autopilot every single day because you have to. You've got to get up. You've got to feed them. You've got to do mm. bits of housework. We have to work. We still got to fit in a bit of social life. It just, it's just. I think that's why you do it all when you're young because you have the completely. energy. Completely. Oh my gosh, completely. And also, I do think it is really important as well. Like, like I see the girls for the first time that um, yeah, Saturday. Long Saturday and. It was so nice. It was only a few hours. We got a takeaway. We was just all chatting. Yeah. We was around one of the girls' houses, but. I, I think it's so important to see your friends. Like as a yeah. mum, like it's so important to also like plan things other than just being, being like a yeah. mum. Because even if it is just a takeaway around one of your friends' houses, which mm-hmm. I love, by the way, I think I prefer that to going out these days. Same. <laughs> um, oh gosh, 100%. but I do think it is like it is so important. It's good for your mental health, isn't it? And that's it. And even though like. Pride of Britain on Monday, even though it was, I was out for what, three hours, it didn't matter because I was like, I've still got out. I'm yeah. still like, was out Glammed for a little bit up. of time. Glammed up. But it did matter that it was three hours or six hours. I still had, it was still nice to have that little kind of release on my own, you know? Completely. Yeah. Everyone needs a release. Everyone needs a release. So, um, we have got some dilemmas. Hi girls, I'm a huge fan of both of you. I think you're both amazing. I watched you both on TOWIE from the very start and love watching the family diaries and listening to your podcast. It makes my week. Oh, thank you. Um, I am moving out of my boyfriend very soon for the first time and I just wondered if you could both give me some tips on moving out and living with someone. Thanks Ooh. girls. So I actually moved out when I was 19, didn't I? I was quite young. Or, oh, actually I was 20. I was 20 when I was I, 20, when I, 20, moved out. I was... I was, um, I was, I didn't move out until I was about 22. Greg was you, the first person I lived with. Yeah, that's it, wasn't Greg's, it? And I, Greg's the only man I've ever lived with. I actually, so is Paul's the only man and I've ever officially lived with. Yeah, same. Because like, I moved out on my own. We whole girl thing, did we? No, when I bought my house in Brentwood in Coxley Green, that was mine on my own. I lived there on my own, didn't I? And um, never actually officially moved in with, like, any boyfriends. So my first per- first person I ever actually officially lived with was Paul. Um, yeah, I do often think, I-, I wonder what it would have been like to live with, like, your friends. You know, like, you see it yeah. on films and whatever well, it, it would have been carnage, wouldn't it? Could you imagine? Because like, oh, we know what it's crazy. like on girls' holidays girls in the hotel. Um, you never know, we might do it when we're, <laughs> when we're, we're like... all old, yeah. <laughs> Um, but anyway, getting back to say, yeah. the, the dilemma. So tips on moving out and living with someone. I think, first of all, like, obviously you kind of need to... It is, I'm trying to think. It's been so... Obviously yeah, sad. because I feel like it is it is very strange at the beginning. And it really is. Although with Paul, it's a bit of a process. He sort of like bought a couple of bags of clothes and then slowly more and more of his stuff was coming 
into the house and then like you know Sky Sports News all of a sudden was on in the house all the time yeah. all these little things I was like oh you know where's friends gone you know I yeah. used to have friends on all the time and then it was that so all them little changes but I think that I guess you just have to I don't know like, what do you say do you really know enjoy I, it like I think you, you get to know someone's habits and how they live really quickly yeah I remember with Greg like within a week of living together I thought, right, he doesn't clean up after himself, he doesn't cook, um, he doesn't do washing, he doesn't do anything, basically. <laughs> and I remember, like, sort of being a little... Because I was quite young as well. It's like, thinking, is this my first child? <laughs> yeah, I remember thinking, like, oh, I don't want to do this, I'm not cleaning these pants and doing yeah. this and do that. But actually, like, I think I took over the role... I mean, we are, and I think it's the way mum's brought us up because how mum mm. is, we are, like, we're homemakers, aren't we? We yeah. love to... We like to cook. We get on and we do it. But I think it's actually it's actually harder when you have kids. I yes. find we're actually to begin with, like you kind of need to. I'd say move in with each other, give it a couple of weeks, see who does what, and then I suppose have the Maybe chat. Set some set some like you do this, I do this kind of thing. Like obviously, yeah. well, in our case, we always end up doing most things, but. Now we've got a family and stuff. Like Paul does a lot around the house, way more than he would have done when it was just me and him, because he has to, because there's just so much more going on. But when it's just the two of you, I think it's. I mean, Paul again doesn't ever cook, but like if your partner can cook, then great. Like do like nights where you can do, you know, some nights you're cooking, some nights he's cooking. Yeah. Make sure he does the bins, or you know, mix mix up the kind of like chores, good, or yeah, like even even just to have. I don't know, like, uh, that's what I'm saying. I, th- I I feel like my advice would be live with, like, live with them for a couple of weeks, but mm-hmm. see who does what naturally. Mm-hmm. And then I think then start laying the rules maybe a couple of weeks in because you, you need to get to yeah know how it Don't forget it to have is. your honeymoon period, though. Just enjoy yourself in your new house together. Yeah. And just, yeah. Christmas Especially and rooms. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because like I say, I I think that it's when kids come along, that's when it gets more... Like, I know sometimes, if, like, I do mo- like all of the cooking mostly. Greg can cook, and he's every now and then might do something, but I do mostly. But then sometimes, like, let's say, if we've had dinner a bit later, then I'll say, right, I'm going to go up and bath the kids, and then I'll yeah. say, can you clear up? And actually, I was um, having a conversation with someone about this the other day. My... Greg's clearing up is not the standard at all of my clearing up. No. Like, the, never wipes the sides. I get never really frustrated the with the way this dish... Nobody can stack the dishwasher the, how I stack it. Yeah. Like, I can get so much in there and it can yeah. be all in, washed properly without, like, any overlapping. Like, it just happened then. I made us dinner before this podcast and then Paul tied it away, which I'm grateful for. Um, but it's never done to the standard. And then that's the other thing we as well. It. Like Greg says to me, nothing's good enough, is it? You moan oh, about I the see, way I see, I don't say anything because I think I'm kind of happy that he's done it, but then I sort of think, mm, could probably give the sides a yes. and why. And... See, you're really good like that. I've got to learn to bite my tongue because... Yeah. I, but then, but then I think it's because I know that he gets he gets like wound up and like bites that I do it even more. But so what like, about the other day, Greg made breakfast Well, he oh made yeah. everyone some bacon sandwiches <laughs> and the bacon was quite burnt to be fair, but he was Extremely cooking burnt. for everyone. Anyway, obviously I'm not going to say a word. I'm grateful for the bacon sandwich being cooked for the me. Burnt bacon Billy was sandwich. going into one and Greg was just like staring at her. She was like, I mean, look at that. What's that? You know, no. doesn't wait that. I was like, no, oh. sorry. I'll tell you what bugged me, right? <laughs> He so we it was me you and Dad and Greg eating wasn't it and the kids yeah. so he, he put like all little sausages in for the kids and whatever. but what really what really bugged me was we me you and Dad just wanted a bacon sandwich yeah but and he Greg made all decided the eggs. to make put twelve eggs twelve two packs of six twelve eggs into that bowl was really unnecessary and make the biggest bowl of scramble but I was just like why what you should have just asked if anyone I think wanted. he was just hung over and didn't know what he was doing yeah I think he, he was just, in a trance trance yeah that's it. But I like you say things like that. Just let it go. Let yeah. it go. But just I enjoy. Just... I hope. Yeah, I hope it all goes well. Anyway, the move. Yes. Good luck with the move. Good luck. 
Um, okay, so next dilemma. Do you want to read this one out? So me and my partner are going away on holiday in December and I think he's going to propose. Oh, oh exciting. Wow. When he was sat next to me the other day, he got a message from a ring company that I've previously oh. sent to him and said, I like. The message said... Your ring will be ready in time for the end of November. Do I tell him or keep it quiet and act surprised? Keep it quiet and act surprised. You can't <gasps> say anything. That will no. completely shatter his whole world and dreams. Oh my goodness, you absolutely keep it quiet. Oh, do not you know say That's really word. sad in a way. I would hate to find out I know. the surprise before Paul does it. Like, Yeah. No, absolutely keep it quiet. and you, 100% because... It's such a big thing. That's, uh, that's probably the biggest thing he's ever going to have to do in his life <laughs> yeah and I, I I remember so, Greg saying as well like it's so nerve-wracking like Greg was like I knew you was going to say yes but Greg was like it's probably one of the most nervous I I've think ever all been men in my say life. that I think that a Paul we've been together eight years I'm like do you think you'll get nervous when you propose to me he was like probably yeah like I think it's just such a big thing of course. even though you know someone so well you've been with them so long I think no matter what the situation is to, to actually get down on one knee and say a few nice words and propose it's scary Completely. definitely don't say anything and yeah <gasps> act surprise yeah that's our advice anyway right clothes you would never wear right this is something that was really popular on our instagram so billy you recently bought a pair of crocs finally yes, I did. <gasps> you were so late to the, to this, the i was really late but do you yeah. know i was always holding on for this house because this is like a croc wearing house you know like can i just say you know i used to wear them in the house i lived in anisha all the time yeah i don't i, I don't own any anymore what? I'm, th- I'm I'm past it and I don't really enjoy them anymore. Yeah. Oh, so, so I, I do like... So like they mine. was... I literally wore them all the time, didn't I? Like every day mm. in the house. Really loved them. Well, you Made everyone me. buy them. <laughs> yeah. And I actually don't own a pair anymore. Anyway, so there was a lot of split opinions and loads of people hate them. Um, lots of people owned them and loved them and saying, you know, you need them. Don't um, get me wrong. I, I'm not... Listen, I wouldn't... Uh, this this could probably happen to me one day, so I shouldn't say it too much. But I don't <laughs> plan on wearing them past my gate. Like I, right, I kind yeah. of want to keep. But they're probably saying that there probably will be times, you know, if you're rushing or on the school run or do this, and you quickly just put them on. But I don't really plan on wearing them. I've out. wore them once to a local small shop. Yeah, that was it. That was the limit. No, my luck though, I'd get papped in them. Yeah, <laughs> well, they're quite popular. They're quite fashionable. Who cares? I mean, I kind of feel like I used to be like because Greg, Greg was like, "Oh, can you get me a pair?" And I've been a bit reluctant to buy him a pair yet because yeah. I think, do I really want to see him in a pair of Crocs? I'm not sure. Mm. See, Paul never wore the Crocs. He wears those Nike slide things in the yeah, house. You've I seen them, get, haven't I you? Might, yeah, I always put them on at yours. Of at course. mine, they're really comfy. They're get, really get comfy. Greg some of them, yeah. maybe. Actually, can you send me the link? Because they're a certain one, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and underneath is like padding. padding. Like, it's just a slider, but they're really cosy. Oh, yeah, I have to get the link off here. Right, so, so we asked Instagram, what fashion items would you never wear? Okay, okay so Rock said a, pun- a poncho, if they even yeah. still exist. <laughs> I get yeah, that. That's really funny, right? What kind of poncho? Because I'm going shooting next month and I've got this really nice poncho-type jacket. <laughs> it's like, Oh, I know exactly what you mean. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it's actually like really nice. Like a wall nice. one, like smart. Yes. <laughs> no, I think that she means like a, you know, like a... Um, a, a, a like fabric poncho. I think I know what sort of poncho she means. Right, okay, that's fine. Um, Lily flip. said, <laughs> flip-flops with a high, high wedge. wedge. That's not for me. No, but do you know what's really funny? I never you got forget. Some? No, I used to have a Juicy Couture pair. They uh, were like, vintage. almost like flat forms. Yes. Black like and cream wedged flip-flops so this happened to me a little while ago one of the stylists just bought loads of bits loads of shoes and i was like i have to be honest i can't wear them and it's like those flat form flip-flops i know they're in fashion and lots of girls wear them lots of supermodels have been seen them with baggy jeans but it just would not suit me i can't wear them i know what you mean um katie says double denim i like a bit of double denim i don't mind double denim uh, Nina says, anything camouflage. <laughs> I know what she means. <laughs> Do you remember we, when we were younger, those like combat trousers, with those strings that would hang off of them? I think they're coming back. Are they? Or have they been back and didn't really happen? I don't know, but I think there is, they, I see quite a lot of girls in like, I think they call like parachute pants or something. Mm. 
They're not for me. Sarah says flares. I know they're fashionable, but I don't get them. I don't oh. mind like a skinny flare on women. I like women, a skinny flare. But not on men. No. Flares way. on men. That's not, no, I don't think. Oh. Um, jelly shoes. Oh, I don't own jelly shoes. Jellies, I don't own jellies. Jellies are for kids in my eyes. Yeah, 100%. Natasha says white socks and sliders. I've never done that. Mm. I know it's a big thing in like the teenage kind of community. You, isn't like you it? get all the boys wearing the yeah. white Nike socks with the slides. Mm. I mean, I understand if you're at home in your socks and then you're doing something where you're popping outside in the slides, but I wouldn't physically go shopping like it. Do you know what I mean? No. It's not really my vibe. Um, Sarah said, if you're a mum, anything white is off limits. Yeah, true. Although I do wear a lot of white. Yeah, do you know what it is as well? I actually find sometimes black can be just as bad. Do you know, like, bits on you, like, I can't stand. Well, baby sick is white as well, so that shows up. And then if your baby's got something a little bit fluffy on, you're covered in fluff, Covered in fluff, like, and that really, that's one, that's a bit of a pet peeve. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Livy said Doc Martens. I've never owned a pair, but I think they're quite cool. Samantha, Vicky, Carolina... And loads of other people said Uggs. Ooh. Hmm. That's, that's um I don't actually own a pair of Uggs, I've got to be honest. Do I've know, got Uggs what, slippers. Yeah, like, and you know that? They're coming back. You know them big wedge Uggs slippers? Everyone's wearing them out and about with socks. I keep seeing that. I mean, how comfortable. I haven't done it. I don't know no, if that would suit me. It wouldn't suit me. But actually, when I was clearing out my old house, I yeah. come across like a pair of Uggs that were quite new. And I was like, I'm keeping them. They're good yeah. for like winter school run um and then rachel said <laughs> it's quite funny yeah a thong after childbirth if you know you oh, know no. I, honestly rachel i i don't i'm still not even wearing a thong and i'm five and a half months in <laughs> I, yeah. can't be I, ha- I only wear them if i really really have really to. have to i just wear it's like soft cotton knickers i can't do mm. the thong thing currently Thong, 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 thong. <laughs> right. Okay. Ask us anything. Ooh. When do you start your Christmas shopping? Hmm. Usually I start mine probably early December and I am also usually one of those people that I, I, I sort of tend to do a lot at the beginning of December, then a lot like the week last of lastminute.com. But this year, because the baby's due at the beginning of December, I'm actually hoping to start mine in November. Oh, well um, done. We have so many to buy for, as you know, so I'm, I really want to try and be organised this year. I'm just going to do most of it online. Same. You can get everything online now. And if you're giving yourself that amount of time... It's Yeah, same. Because if you go to, like, a Smith's Toys, let's say, which is amazing, the kids love it, like Kid oh, in the Candy Shop. That, I do like going to a toy shop, though. I do everything yeah. else online, but I do like going to pick the toys. That's, that's yeah, like one... If you're, if you're ticking off the list, like, you know, mother-in-law, sister-in-law, yeah. sister, mum, it's so easy just to be at your laptop and just, like, search the internet and just buy clothes Completely. or toiletries or, like, perfume, whatever it is, yeah. Um, what um about yeah, you? same. I'm going to try and start earlier this year because we're going skiing. Obviously, your baby's due, and we've got a ski trip. And I just want to be organised as well. I just want to yeah. get bits all sort of kind of done. November, I'm going to try and aim for November. But November, like Paul, yeah. Paul will go shopping on Christmas Eve, like in the yeah. morning. It's just a nightmare every year. Greg's I don't know why. Like that. He's very lastminute.com. But I, I make it really easy for Greg. Like I'll yeah. just send him a link of something that I really like. Yeah, that's I it. I just, yeah, something. I like this, or if not, just yeah. we'll go shopping or something. Yeah, just I'm the same. Keep it easy. Um, next question. Does Billy have her baby name yet? No, I don't. Um, I've got a few names that I like. Um, I'm struggling more with boy names. I like I've your got, boy name. Yeah, I do. I mean, I do, I do like it, but I'm one of those people, like, I'll wait until the baby's here, look at the baby, and then decide that's what i done with rosie and edward obviously paul's always paul but i done yeah. that and then i was so close to not registering rosie or getting fined because i left it too long so maybe just yeah have a top three <laughs> i do need to start thinking about it a bit more though because i've only got like one or two for boy and for girl you've only, Actually, got, I've only got one for boy and then a couple i like for girls i like your boy name it's really nice sorry guys yeah. it's how what tease we can't even tell you because sorry. she doesn't want to reveal sorry, um okay so next question last question for us is 
That was so quick, sorry. Last question for Ask Us Anything is best home cooked dinner. Um, if I'm excluding children, I do love to cook a buttered chicken curry and I make yeah. the little kind of chapati naan bread, rice, and I do like a little chopped salad. That's probably uh, one of mine and Paul's favourite that I cook in the house. So I would say best home cooked meal for me is I for everyone in my house, everyone loves my roast dinner. Yeah, I was going to say roast, then I thought, oh, maybe I'll say something else. I do, but also <laughs> another really good one is my chicken casse. Mm, I have to know Which what? is a chicken casserole, by the way. I don't actually think I've had your chicken casse. I'm going to make it for you next time you come down. Okay, and when With I come dumplings. to yours next, I'll bring some curries. You can put them in oh, the freezer please. or a, a fridge. Because, cause... you know, we don't ever... That's the one thing that I don't really make much is a curry. I make everything else. I just don't ever seem to make a curry. Well, they, they, they're, they're, it is a bit long-winded and does stink the house out. So maybe don't do that in your lovely new kitchen. I'll bring you some bits and you can put them in the freezer because when you've had the baby, you're not going to want to cook. I'm going to hold you to that because you know okay. how I worry about the cooking. I'll do it. Um, okay, that's it. I think that's all we've got time for yes. today. I'm literally, after this, I'm having a shower, put my charms on, and I'm making a cup of tea and getting into bed. Same, 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 same. I'm back in London tomorrow, so we're up for a, uh, an award, a uh, revived oh college. Oh, yeah, for... well, good luck. Yeah, thank you. So well, you're going to have I such a nice time. Don't know if we've won or not, but I shall let you know tomorrow oh, night. Oh, I've got, I've got good positive vibes it's for you. It's for best new brand, so. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You so deserve it. I mean, it, we do deserve it, but who knows? There's so many amazing brands out there, but let's no, see. But... We can chat about it. I'll fill you all in, guys, that's listening next week on the night. So, yes, hopefully we win. Okay, well, I will speak. I mean, I'll speak to you tomorrow, yeah. but I'll see you next week. Yeah, see you next week. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.